Life's interesting, isn't it? I was down for a week. Sick. And, uh, go to leave this morning. The old S10 Blazer was knocking and banging. So, I think we need to run a... I think it was a... Lifter. So she's been sitting here now for about three hours. Drove it and went away once it warmed up. And uh, let's start it. Let's see if it's still knocking and banging. How'd you hear it? it went away. It's hot out here, so it probably didn't cool off any oil. But my oil pressure gauge didn't go down. So I didn't lose any oil pressure. It's not like it was a rod or nothing. It was revving up. Hopefully you can hear me through the, I got the air conditioning on. It's saying it's hotter blazes out right now. Uh, See right now it just started at 40 pounds of pressure at idle. That's what it's always been. Um, and you can see it isn't completely cooled off. I've been here three hours. With the temp outside, it just doesn't cool off fast around here. But um, this was bottoming out when I'd accelerate until the engine got up to full operating temperature. Let's see if I rev it up right now if if it goes way up or not. Yeah, see how it's going way up? Something's, and it just dropped all by itself. Yeah. 2,000 RPMs, that's up way too high. And now it dropped way low, something definitely, uh, in my opinion, I'm probably sludgy. I change my oil on a regular basis, but as you can see, 183,966 miles on her. 100, basically 184,000. Did an oil change not that long ago, but it might be might be getting close to due. Did one at 182.3 and we're at 183.9, so 1,500 miles ago, 1,600 miles ago. Uh, I don't know why it says the oil change needs to be done at 187. That'd be 5,000 miles? I, I change every three, so we're almost at 200 or 2,000 miles. Let's see, three to nine is six. Yeah, 16, 1700 miles ago. I think what I'm going to do, first and foremost, um, is run an engine flush cleaner through it. And I'm going to buy a slow one. A lot of these real nasty ones that you know you put in and you run the motor for 10, 15 minutes and then you do your oil change. And that's fine. I think those are good once you've done a flush. Um, and that's probably what I'll start doing after this. But Seafoam makes a high mileage one that uh, you run for about 300 miles before your oil change. Two to 300 miles. And I like that idea because all the passages and all the stuff that's kind of stuck gets a chance to slowly get burned and loosened up and knocked out so that's what we're doing today sick for a week had a infection up in here that took over the whole side of my head and couldn't do nothing so today's the first day back being able to work in the shop um, 
had to run some errands and uh, come out early in the morning to that. And I'm like, well, I'm not leaving town uh, to go. I got some errands to run, and it's going to be like 30 miles out of town, 30 miles back. I'm like, I ain't, ain't going to do that with this happening. So uh, I don't know if I'm going to yet, but I'm running over to Advance, and I'm going to put the sea foam in. I'm going to run some local errands that get me closer to where I can leave the town and then make my decision at that point if I'm leaving town or not with uh, with the sea foam in and let it do its thing and see if um, over the next couple of days if the knot goes away overnight. Um, the tick. It's a pretty loud tick. But the fact that it goes away once the oil gets circulating and... Uh, heated up I'm pretty sure that's a um, lifter not pumping up because if it was a rod knock or anything like that it'd be consistent it's hard to tell I had my head down in there this morning but I didn't have a camera with or nothing so uh, I had my head down there this morning and it was uh, pretty prominent and very 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 rhythmic wasn't all over the place and if I revved it up it got louder it was scaring me because it was almost like a rod knife but I parked it last night not a single noise coming out so then once it warmed up and it went away I'm like yeah lifters not pumping up varnish sludge um, I've put 20 30,000 miles on this vehicle since I got it so it had 150 160,000 on it when I bought it I probably should have desludged it then. You know, who knows what the last guy did? But it ran. It, it's always ran good. I mean, I had to do O2 sensors and things of that nature, and it's always ran good. But my fuel economy's always been crap with this car. I get 11, 12 miles per gallon out of a six-cylinder, and that's not even me rotting on it. You know, damn it! I thought I had it. Key all the way forward, so I could hit the brake pedal. <laughs> Guess not. So this will basically be a review of uh, Seafoam, is what I'm getting at. Let's see if it actually does what they say it does. It should clean up that varnish. Um, I watched a couple of videos of people using it on their vehicle and they pulled the valve covers off and showed the, the varnish staining on a 200,000 plus vehicle and uh, after 100 miles it, was, it looked a lot better. So we're going to start with that first. All right, we're in cool guy mode, ready to rock and roll. Let's, uh, I'm gonna keep this, I'll keep you guys on the dash, basically, and uh, I'll uh, let you guys know how it goes. We'll kind of watch and see if the fuel, or the oil pressure is uh, changes or not. Uh, this will be a good show, because I'm gonna have to get on it. to get out in the traffic here in a second. Yeah, that oil pressure is definitely jumps way up there like something's plugged. You would think that means, oh, you're getting good flow, but that means there's something plugged somewhere else. So. Stop here. Yep. That's a, I believe that's a little bit lower than normal.
inconsistent. I'm going to say we've got uh, some varnished up injector uh, lifters here. Yeah, I'm that guy. I'm back into my spots. Love it or hate it. Okay. See, now that's idling. About the same, a little higher. This car my whole life has been, uh, the, the whole time I've had it has been very consistent, very good. I mean, it runs great. You know, I put some fuel system cleaner through it uh, oh, a couple months ago, woke it up, probably do for some more. Gas sucks nowadays. Probably run a few tanks of that. So it's what I'm gonna do with the, uh, the seafoam here. It's only gonna get a third of the can into the engine. And, uh, because they say an ounce for every five quarts, this is five, or for every quart, and this is a five quart system. So it's a 16 ounce can, gonna run, you know, five, six ounces in the motor, and then I'm gonna pour the rest of it in the tank and uh, should clean that out too. It's not direct injected or anything like that, so that should help clean the, out the, uh, a little more cleaning on the valves and all that, and the injectors and all that. So we're gonna do both, but I am not. I'm not a YouTuber, damn it, not yet. Because I, uh, I'm i not taking you in with me. And walking through the store and showing you the can and all that like some people do. I, I'm not comfortable. I still get embarrassed having the camera out with anybody watching me film, so. Um, I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna grab the can that I need and I'm gonna put it in the engine and you know, we'll, we'll go from there. See you in a minute. A few moments later. All right guys, that's what we're running. Can you see it? Yeah, okay. Let's pop this hood. in here because a lot of times you need a stupid long funnel Take long here in Florida. All right, let's see. I almost have a full tank of gas. So, putting that 10, 11 ounces in there, nine to 11 ounces. That stuff circulate a little it's gonna thin it out of here what I'm also gonna do is 33 miles since I got gas so I'm just gonna reset that so I know that when I get to no more than 300 miles which for me is about two weeks I don't drive that often but today I'm gonna get a probably you know 60 to if I go out of town 60 to 80 miles So yeah, nothing changed yeah, as of yet, of course not. We'll be back to let you know. 
hopefully get some working done today on the old uh, Mozmad so that we can get that steering column out and get the gearbox out. So, supposed to do that last week, but like I said, I was down for the count and uh, just getting back at things today. And we're going to fit in what we can fit in. So, all right, guys, be back when I see some changes and uh, let you know. All right, so part of what I got going on here. Keeping it in drive and not overdrive. I'm on a 55 mile an hour road. And I'm keeping the RPMs up just to run this fuel for a little bit. I got about a five, six mile drive on this road. Well, of course I can't keep speed up because we got hokey pokey running, but uh, trying to keep the RPMs up. There we go, I can get around this guy. Beepers. It's one thing I learned in Florida, when you're retired, you ain't in a hurry, right? Keep the R's up for this, you know, five mile run or whatever it is. And uh, that'll help work some of that fuel system cleaner through there aggressively. Being that I ran a fuel system cleaner through here already like last month, it's not going to really need it. I would have normally liked to put it in with like a quarter of a tank, give it that extra diluted, do this run and then put gas in. That way it gets a shot for five, six miles of really heavy duty stuff. I did that with the last fill up or the last cleaning I did. So this one's just going to be more of a maintenance, slow cleaning. But I'm also getting some higher revs and moving that oil with that fill, with that in there now so that hopefully we can get a little bit more of a, a harsher cleaning going on in this little bit of run here as well. Does that make sense? Talking and driving in traffic is uh, not my forte. So... Hopefully that makes sense. All right, I'll come back if I notice anything different. I, I, I tell you this, it, it's running a little bit smoother. I mean, this, this truck always ran smooth, but it does feel just a touch bit smoother at this point. Um, but we'll see as we drive her a little more today. One hour later. Well, 31 miles. I decided to take the little trip, round trip. I noticed that this actually went down a hair as we were as i was going on the interstate and if i remember right it was just below 40 its whole life like when you're driving 50 plus miles an hour um for a long trip um 40 when you first start it drops down a little bit idles about there maybe a little i don't know about there i guess now i'm thinking about it so i think it helped so far 31 miles i think it'll be a miracle overnight but uh because it's the slow work and stuff it seems to be idling better and the fuel system stuff i you know I'm, I'm sure that's working um it's a little diluted in a full tank but uh everything just seems a little a little smoother so hopefully tomorrow i'll know more because cold start in the morning we'll see what the knock sounds like hopefully it's improved or gone gone would be good um, by the time we get back home and stuff, we'll have 30, 30, 65 miles on it. So, um, if I decide to run, do anything else today or not, or if I stay home, it'll be 65 in the morning or it'll be 75 in the morning. But that should be a good indicator of, uh, if it's improved or not, if it's another hundred miles, it'll be worth it to get the oil changed. So. I'm going to check the oil, too. I, I checked it this morning, and that, that's the thing, you know. I never think about running this engine flush because the oil on the dipstick is clean. It always looks clean. That's what worries me. Um, it'd be different if it was dirty looking, but, again, it's only got 15, you know, 1,600, 1,700 miles on it at this point. And, uh, but cars that are real sludgy and really not taken care of I've taken care of it but I've only had a 20,000 of 25,000 of the 180,000 that are on it so um, 
but from the day I got it, I changed oil, I do all that right away, and the oils always look clean, it's always look good, so I just assumed the other guy took care of it, because it runs good, you know, it needed maintenance, it needed tune-ups, tune-up stuff, and uh, maintenance stuff, you know, tie rod ends, and I did ball joints, and O2 sensors and all that. I mean, it just it, it ran great. So and it, it and it has. I drove it a lot. So hopefully, fingers crossed. It's just the lifter that wasn't pumping up because it was getting varnished or sludged over. I have remote start on this, as you saw. And here in Florida, I remote start, and the thing runs for 10 minutes just idling before I ever get in uh, because of the you know cool it down a little bit. Um, so that may be part of contributing to the varnishing up and stuff because that doesn't, it's not that good on them if you're not constantly flushing them. So I, I got to remind myself that I need to flush this motor every time before I change it. I got to run that flush. So, okay, let me head home. Got to unload some stuff. So, well, that's Florida for you. The daily storm is coming in driving into that mess good times good times a few moments later well I guess the rain's catching up to us you can see it up there it's dripping on the windshield right now but it's pouring ahead <laughs> Daily Florida storm. I almost beat it home. Well, I guess I'll be sitting in the car for a while while the damn uh, waiting for the rain to subside so I can unload and get inside. Oh, very nice, very nice, very nice. The next day. All right, guys. Early morning. Next day. Truck's been sitting for since four o'clock last night, and it's six thirty in the morning now. So let's hear if there's a knocky knock, or if it's at least gotten better, because it it ran for at least three minutes before it went away yesterday. So if it goes away quicker, we're on the right track. All right, remote start engaged. <laughs> How about that? Sounds normal again. No knocky knock at all. Zero. knocky knock very nice that might have just been our problem bad lifter uh, run some of this stuff through it change the oil and from here on out every oil change is gonna get uh, a power flush the, the quick flush and uh, hopefully it just gets better and better as we go yeah pressures not going through the roof when you rev it that's pretty much where it's always been cold yeah I think maybe we have uh, avoided a catastrophe another 100 miles minimum I'll try to get 200 on it um, it says 100 to 300 and then you can change it so I am going to try to get at least 200 
maybe close to 300 and then I uh, really give this thing a chance to get cleaned up as best it can with this soft clean and then get the oil changed so all right guys seafoam high mileage for the win so far